Hello and welcome to WPLMS Tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to start the WPLMS student app. So first up, we have built this student app on Ionic 3. So you can quickly search on web about Ionic framework and you'll land on this page, which is ionicframework.com. And you need to first install the Ionic framework in your computer for which you can go to the docs section and in the ionic framework you will see the installation in the introduction part so this section covers how to install ionic and once you have installed ionic in your computer then you can open the terminal window or the command prompt or the bash now to start a ionic project we need to type ionic start then you can use the name of your website as your project name for example by themes and then we'll add version 2 and hit enter so now we have successfully started our ionic project and you'll see the folder name that is the name of your site or your project name in your ionic apps folder so when we open this we will see a src folder here now when you purchase the app this is the folder that we have given you so you need to unzip the purchased files from the code canyon so which is and paste them here so you'll see that there is a ionic underscore src dot zip file that you get when you unzip it you get the ionic underscore src folder so we need to delete this src folder and rename the ionic underscore src folder into src so now this is our wplms app so next thing is that we need to prepare this app so when we open the src folder you will see a folder called services inside this folder you will see a folder called config.ts we need to open this config.ts file in your uh, text editor and here we when we scroll down we see a url and a client id value so these are the two values that we need to update so for this we go to the WPLMS site and in the LMS settings section we go to the API section and here we need to make sure that all these are enabled and there is an API security state and there is an API version which is all available for the app and save these changes. Next is the keys and app section. So here we need to create a test app. So we need to create an app and we need to get the app ID from here, which is which will place it here. So as you can see that the app ID, I've already placed it here and the site link is the local site link that I'm testing this app on. So note that when we are publishing this app for iOS or uh, Android or to test on an actual device, this needs to be a publicly fetchable URL, which means that this should be your actual site URL. So once we have made these changes in the config file, if we quickly scroll down the config file for more information, you'll see that here we are controlling the menu, which is the app menu and uh, here we are controlling the home page what all feel, what all sections that you want in the home page we can add new sections also here and we are controlling the directory filters for example many users will not be using levels or locations taxonomy we can simply switch it to zero and then these taxonomy filters will not appear in the directory page similarly for start date offline instructor selection categories etc can be disabled from here then we have the default track this section does not need to be touched then we have the translations so you can translate the app in your favorite language by changing all these strings 
right in the config.ts file. So once you have translated these strings, when you load the app, the app will show these translated strings in your mobile app. Then we have the contact info for the contact page. Then we have the terms and conditions which are for the app. And the remaining functions we do not need to edit. So once we have saved these changes, we go back to the terminal and hit Ionic serve to test the app on the browser. So note, note that we have not installed any additional Cordova plugins which are required for the app. So we, uh, we will get some notices and errors for installing the Cordova plugins. So now to resolve these, we need to type in all the commands that I have enlisted below. So now when we put ionic serve, we see a screen like this. So our app has finally loaded in the browser mode. So we inspect element and then we can enable the mobile mode from here. We can also change the mobile uh, screen size from here. So here you can test the app on your local or your live uh, machine, live desktop. So here, as you can see, this is coming from my local installation and the directory and all the functionalities are working as expected. So for Facebook and Google, we'll cover this in a, in another course. Now to publish this app, we need to add, uh, we need to follow the Ionic guidelines. So here, if you go to the deploying section, so this will cover in our next course. Thanks for watching.